Okay, so I'm Andreas Rumpf, the original inventor and still lead developer of NIM. And so this is my talk, uh, Move Semantics, which is the new stuff coming to NIM, inspired by Rust and C++, but we, we, we tweaked it. Um, so let's get started. So the, the unofficial motto of NIM is actually copying bad design is not good design. <laughs> and uh, so that's already a useful motto because it tells us what not to do. So yeah, we, we, don't, we should not copy bad designs. And uh, more useful than knowing what not to do is knowing what to do. So paraphrasing this into recombine good pits from several sources. And so that's what we did. We looked at, uh, as I said, Rust and C++ and Swift, how they do memory management and if, if these concepts also apply to NIM. Um, and it turns out the answer, answer is yes. <laughs> so, uh, here this is an example. So I have a, an array with two elements inside and then I append the number three to it. And um, so this is a growable array. I think in C++ it's a vector and uh, in NIM it's called a sequence. So here is what happens in memory. We have these, this uh, global array and it actually has a length and a capacity and a single pointer to a block of memory that can grow. And when we append a number, we need to, and since the capacity is already full, like we had capacity for two elements, uh, we need to create a new block of memory, which is big enough to, to uh, contain all three numbers. <laughs> and um, we need to do something with, with, the, with the old memory block. And usually you would say like it's a realloc in C and it would free the old block immediately. And now this, this is the most effective way of doing things. However, it causes a problem and that is, is that? Yeah, okay. Um, and the problem is that if I have other aliases to this pointer, I, it, I must uh, ensure that it doesn't cause a dangling pointer. So here in line two, I say I have this other variable and it should have the same uh, contents as some numbers. And um, if I do a shallow copy and just copy all the bits, then I would copy the pointer, which is invalidated in line three by the append, causing this to contain a dangling pointer. So that would be very, very unsafe and it's a very bad idea. Um, so to solve this problem, there are a couple of solutions. One is to deep copy the elements in the container, which is what C++ does, and also what NIMS semantics do. Um, you could also say, okay, so let's have a pointer to a pointer, so everybody gets uh, the new update. This is done in Java and C Sharp, I think. Um, but it's, a it's a slightly less effective, uh, efficient, because then you have another indirection. You could also say, well, this is an assignment, but it's, it's a bad assignment, so let's just forbid it. Um, this is, would be a terrible solution, but yeah, you, you could. <laughs> um, the first solution, as I mentioned, so you just have a garbage collector cleaning up this bad pointer for you, or only if no other uh, uh, variable refers to it. Or finally, we could move it, and that is the fifth point here. So we could steal the block of memory <coughs> and uh, perform a move. And that's also available in C++. So this would be an explicit move here in NIM. So you can do this. You can say, I'm going to move these numbers over to other. And then afterwards, the source is uh, invalidated. So it becomes an empty sequence. And so if you then append the three, this is the only thing that's left inside there. So, and as you can see in line six, after that, some numbers only has the three inside. So, this is the explicit move. Um, I mean, you can try to program in this style, and uh, it's not really pleasant. So, but if it's explicit, it's, it's okay. Like, you are aware that some numbers is empty afterwards. But there are plenty of cases where you can move uh, implicitly. The first example, famous, uh, if you have a result of a function call, you know it's not going to be used afterwards, so you can move the, 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 um, directly <coughs> into the variable A. Um, 
Yeah, and then you could also say that um, uh, if you if you know that it's not used afterwards, this is what you can do. You can move it. So, and one design goal was to make this work. Like, okay, we know function calls can be moved, um, but I want to be able to name my results for readability without performance in, uh, overhead. So, as long as named value is a local variable, the, the NIM compiler can see that named value is like, it's used for the F call and that not afterwards anymore. So um, it would move the value, the named value into the F, and then it would move F's result into A. And here's another example. So I have a list with three integers inside. And if I, if I say Y is X, then since X isn't used anymore, we can move. And likewise for the set equals Y. And so this works for local variables. So um, let's think about... Oh, I'm not gonna. Okay, um, parameters do cause problems because we don't know if the value that's been pushed to to our put is used afterwards. So um, in this example is about like it's pseudocode for a hash table implementation. Um, I mean, <coughs> usually it would more be more than two <coughs> lines, but so we hash the value in the. Um, we want to move this this key value pair in, into the the T. And given, given the current semantics, this would mean to make this uh, expensive copy operation here. But you can annotate this parameter values to use uh, the sync keyword. And then it's like uh, it, the, the, the constraint that afterwards it shouldn't be used anymore, it bubbles up the call chain. So. Now, because it's a sync parameter, we know we can, uh, it won't be used afterwards, and we can perform the move inside the, uh, inside in, in line three. Um, so again, if I have values, like a list with three strings inside, and I don't use them afterwards, I can move. Now, what happens if I use values afterwards? Then we, since we want to take ownership of this of the guts of this object uh, we the, the compiler produces a warning for us telling us like you are about to sync something that is used afterwards and I will make a copy for you so um, to to ensure safety so this has also been uh, uh, an, a design criterion if you get it wrong the performance suffers but no weird crashes please so, and that's uh, true. And um, the compiler warns about the performance aspect. And currently this warning is, is overly, uh, like it's, it's, uh, it's uh, a bit too aggressive. So I need to <laughs> make this a bit better. Um, so if, but um, one solution here would be you move it around. Like <laughs> Uh, if you echo the values before you uh, embed it into this uh, hash table, then it would work because the compiler knows echo doesn't doesn't uh, want to take over ownership of values, but table put does because of this sync annotation. So that's one solution. Of course, like if you are just do, uh, adding some code for debugging purposes, you don't care if it causes more copies or not because this code will be removed soon again afterwards. Okay, so as I said, it's the sync parameter is an optimization. You don't have to use it. If you get it wrong, the performance is worse than before. If you get it right, you get better performance. And um, we are also working on inferring this, this property so that you don't have to annotate it at all. Because I actually, I went through the standard library trying to add these sync annotations everywhere and I was like, yeah, no. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, I let the compiler figure this out. So anyway, here are a couple of examples. So we have a hash table, and this is this uh, put putter or whatever, like insert or update. Then we have equality on some generic type T, or plus on T, on finally append or add on this global sequence. And the question is where to put the sync annotation. And you don't have to guess, I'm telling you. So, uh, oh, sorry, it's not really. 
Yeah, okay. So uh, embedding stuff into a hash table takes the sync annotation and the append for the sequences takes the sync annotation. And now here is, this is an, so the, the first line is an insert or an update. And if I insert into the hash table, I also want to take ownership of the key. But if it's just an update on the table, I already have the key. And then what happens? Should this be your sync or not? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but um, the thing is, once, once, if you do this with the sync, the, the compiler will actually ensure that this value is consumed for all cases, so you don't have to do that. Um, and there is some notion of what it means to consume something, so we are going into destructors. Anyhow, so there is a different problem. Okay, so now I can put stuff into a hash table very effectively. That's good. How about, how, how do I get values out of it? And again, again the same problem, like, uh, and this is, a result equals is the same as return statement in, in, in this case. But I wrote it as an assignment so that it's more obvious that this, again, is an expensive copy. So, okay, we can now try to move this. And then you would, the compiler will complain that T is actually not mutable. Like you, you cannot move out of it because move mutates this, the source. Okay, so, and then let's, let's make it mutable. Okay, this, this works. But now you need to think, like what, what happens? Like you move the value out of this table so you can access it exactly once and then there's, it's, it's gone afterwards. So that's pretty bad. Unless maybe, I mean, if you have a pop operation for your stack, that's exactly what you want. But for a hash table, it's pretty shitty. Um, so yeah, we need another annotation, which is lending a value or lend v. And this is then a borrowing operation. So in Rust, this would be a borrowed cup, uh, pointer. In C++, it's a ref. Um, so it's, it's actually the same thing. And yeah, you, we need to ensure that the, once you borrow that this doesn't outlive the, the collection's lifetime and stuff. But um, it's, it's, yeah. It's like in Rust, but not like in, 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 in C++ because they can't be checked. Uh, yeah, okay, so the point is in Rust it would be checked and in C++ it wouldn't. And in NIM it is checked, except that we need to be better. <laughs> 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 so, okay. Um, so now that we have now that we understand how to optimize complex assignments, like deep copies or whatever you want to call it, we can apply this knowledge to something else, like take reference counting. Reference counting is a basically the pointer assignment just simply got m uh, way more expensive than it used to be because uh, if I copy a pointer around, I need to increment the reference count of the source, I need to decrement the reference count of the destination, and then I can do the pointer copy. But if I'm able to move the pointer, then it could just be this bitwise copy and maybe uh, nullify the source afterwards if, if required. So this, this, this insight lets, le led us to the development of a new garbage collector mode. I mean, it's called GC, but GC is actually name, NIM's name for any kind of memory management that you want to. Um, so, and here I have a benchmark. This is the binary, like this is a standard benchmark for uh, throughput of a garbage collector. And so I'm, I'm not, ex I don't expect you to understand all of this, but um, the point is now here, uh, all the annotations like sinks and lens, they are not there. But even so, they, are, they work uh, under the hood for us. And so, we create binary trees and then trillions of these to some depth. And this is the, the main part. Um, as I said, this is a standard benchmark and the results are really, really nice. So we have a couple of garbage collectors so we can compare all of them. And the new one is fastest by, by quite a lot, like <laughs> factor of three or two or whatever you want to compare it with. And uh, Memory consumption is about the same as before. For Burm GC, I will, haven't been able to figure out the memory consumption precisely, so that's, that's not available. Um, so this, this um, yeah. So now the, the question is, okay, this is very better than before. 
how, how does it compare to manual memory management? And NIM can do both, so you can use your own PTRs. So previously this was a ref in line four, now it's a PTR. And uh, the, to make a tree, we have this nasty allocation with a cast in, in line 12. And of course, we need to free the tree manually. So this is a recursive free. So first free the left, then the right, and then deallocate this node. And again, this. And now in the in the main part, we have to free these trees uh, manually, which is very annoying. So in line 18, for instance, you can see this, or in line 15, where you actually had to introduce a new temp variable just to be able to free it later on. So, um, and the result is, it's still, it's still slower, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, here is the thing, what Arc actually does it, does, it does optimized reference counting. And what the manual version does is basically, I don't have a reference count because I know these are unique pointers. So if you add the, just the, the machine word for this reference count back to this manual version, it's back to, to almost the same, to, to six dot, two seconds, uh, whereas arc is at 6.7 seconds. So there's still, and, and the memory consumption is identical uh, under the assumption that I fixed this one bug <laughs> that's left. Um, so we are getting close to manual memory management. And for, in this, for this particular benchmark, I think we can uh, get to, to uh, get to the difference to into the noise level, but... Uh, is the, the example was uh, single threaded, so is, uh, are the reference counts atomic, or...? No, they are not. We are, we'll get to that. So, um, I'll, yeah, I'll get to that, okay? Um, there's a different benchmark for lat latency. I don't have the source code for this, but previously we had a soft real-time garbage collector and the latency was uh, 0 .0 0.0.3 milliseconds for this benchmark. And now with ARC, the, it's be better by over a factor of three. The total runtime has been reduced also. And the, the peak memory consumption is also better. So not, not just throughput is better, but also late latency. Um, now I've already outlined it. So what's going on under the hood is that we have uh, destructors and move operators and assignments. And you c we can exploit them for other things, like they are exposed to you. Uh, we'll see in a minute. So you can now make your files close automatically after you, so that's very nice. And this is, there's better composition between these custom containers. Like previously we had like manual memory management and GC memory management, and you must be careful to not to mix them very, because it doesn't really work well. But with these extension points, the interop between these two worlds is much, much better than before. Okay, so here's another thing that we now can do. Again, the same benchmark, but now we want to have some object pool, or I think it's better called an arena. So we have an arena allocator, still dealing with these silly nodes which only have two pointers inside. Um, so to allocate a new node, we basically check if there's a capacity left, kind of like for a sequence. And then we, but the, the node itself is, a, is an unchecked pointer. So we take the address of the element in the array, which is the, the backup storage for our node. And now here we can say, look, if you want to copy a pool, it's not supported because I couldn't be bothered to implement it. And so if you try to copy the full pool around accidentally, the compiler will complain and tell you like, no, you, you can't. And if the, sco if the pool goes, gets out of, goes out of scope, the destructor is called. So this is in line three. And of course, what do, what do you do in a destructor? Well, you free this, the, the blocks of memory that's been, they, um, and they have been chained in a linked list via this, this next pointer. And yeah, and then the, you need to change the program, unfortunately. So if you want to make a tree, you need to be aware of this pool where to get the new nodes from. And so this is, becomes a parameter of this make tree and recursively you need to, to pass it on, <coughs> as you can see in line 11 and 12. And now 
the bench. Uh, okay. Um, and now it's it's um, a bit easier to use because these pools are free uh, for us afterwards automatically. And in this case, I had to make two th uh, two pools, like a one for the long lift data and one for the short lift data. So that you can see this in line five and fourteen. And the question is, uh, how does it perform? So that's the result. It's it's still much faster over a factor of two per performance improvement and memory consumption is roughly the same. I mean, um, so yeah. Okay, so in summary, move semantics mostly work under the hood for us. They give us really good uh, optimizations. Five minutes left, okay. Um, yeah, we have seen the speedups, and they make the memory management deterministic. So what, what's actually uh, the case here, so if you use a, a reference counting scheme and optimize it, what you can do is you can attach a, a cost model to your programming language. And once you do that, you, you get into the realm of hard real-time systems. So you can use NIM for hard real-time system with, with this technology. Um, we have seen it improves throughput, latency, memory consumption, and threading. Um, well, I have, don't, don't have an example, but as you can imagine, if you can move data from one thread to the other, it's, uh, it's uh, and because you are guaranteed that this is kind of the last user of this data, then you, you cannot have data races. So it's a very nice uh, feature of that. Um, yeah, it also improves the, the ease of programming, like just imagine your files uh, close automatically and your sockets, and uh, we get a better composition between these different uh, container classes, let's say. Okay. Um, yeah, you can uh, play with these benchmarks. I have uploaded them to GitHub. And yeah, if you don't know already, this is our website and the forum, and we are active on IRC as well. So that's my talk. Thank you for your attention. So we have time for questions. Also, the next speaker should come up and start preparing. OK, questions, yeah. So is this available um, right now, or is this uh, still a work in progress? Um, well, it's on GitHub in the development. Oh, sorry, I need to repeat the question. So the question is how to get it. Um, it's not in the version one of the language. It's well, it will be our next major release this year. But you can already use it if you want to. If you use the, the devel development version of them. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. The threading. No. no? no okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Next question. Yes. For, for what? Ah, owned refs. Um, so yeah, we've been tinkering with owned refs, which is kind of unique pointers, um, NIM style. Um, but w I did these benchmarks, and I noticed that it doesn't pay off. Like it's it's um, so. For instance, you can use this binary tree benchmark with owned annotations and use this new runtime, and I got the same number. So in this case, we didn't see the the benefit. And so um, I, I, currently, we do not know what to do with owned. <laughs> yes. So my question was, uh, uh, how do you define visible after? And uh, in particular, how subtle are you when there are if statements and stuff like that? Okay, okay. So the question is... With a sub-question, which okay. is, are you familiar with the void, uh, void safety in iPhone? Void safety? Yeah. Mm, like from... from um, so void in iPhone is equivalent... Eiffel, to yes, yes, void yeah, safety. Okay, so okay. You have these specific special cases for what they, they consider as void safety. Okay. Okay, so two, two questions. The first was, uh, how do we know that it's the last usage of a variable? The answer is we have a control flow graph and we track these precisely. Uh, uh, 
uh, on points in the conditional? Um, well, it's in, in its conditional, then it, uh, we, we know this. Like, um, say you, you move it f in every case, then, or you. you, you um, <coughs> Uh, how to put it? Here's an uh, um, so Let, let's say you move something in a loop. Yes. And it's used. You know, it's moved every time except the last one in the loop. Um, yeah, we n we noticed that. I mean, the, the compiler will tell you I cannot move because you use it in the next loop iteration. No. Oh. So exactly. To be too smart about that. Mm, we are smart enough about it in practice. <laughs> okay. Yes. And the second question is void safety or nullability. Um, it's uh, it's also like work in progress. Like we, we want this not nil annotation in the language to, to guard us against this. And you're right. Like if you use an explicit move, you need a value to have afterwards to put inside your this, the source. And then you need to make the pointer nullable just for that, right? Yes. But, uh, but if you use an implicit move, we know it's not going to use afterwards, so we can simply pretend that nil is not a really value for your for your pointer. So the reason <laughs> I was pointing to void safety is yeah. because in the case of iPhone, they decided to have things like if blah, then else, and they can say, for instance, if my test is specifically a yeah. test, then in the then part it's considered to be void safe, in the else part it's not. Okay. You could do the same thing for moves. You could decide that if I have my move semantics inside an if, mm -hmm. you know, inside, <laughs> if I'm in the condition for the test, then I can keep the move semantics, in the else I cannot. Okay. That's what I was referring to for being smart okay. about the next one. I need to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you do have time for another question if you want. Oh, really? So, yeah. Okay, more questions. Yeah. Because we have to wait. Okay, it's not actually a question. Okay, good. I uh, uh, just want to say a big thank you because I learned that Nim last year in Boston ah. in a presentation, <laughs> Lightning Talks. And I have to say to you a big thank you because uh, <laughs> you saved me from the dilemma <laughs> if I had to use Go on an accident like neither of those. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>